Hi, this is Lisa Klein with our little radio program, Who Really Cares? And I'm here with Michael, Dr. Michael Redkowski. We were inspired to do another one of our little silly shows after um, we've both been watching um, the new Sex in the City series. And we've been talking about the Miranda debacle. So we decided to have a little <laughs> chat about that. Um, Michael is a renowned couples psychologist with a thriving practice here in Washington, D.C. He has a wealth of knowledge about couples. Is that fair to say? Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Knowledge. Yeah. So, Michael, care to start off? <laughs> well, um... Yeah, let's talk about Miranda and her uh, not so much relationship with Che as the way that she decided that her marriage was dead and yeah. over. How's yeah. that for a starting place? Let's do that. Sounds good. Yeah. So what did you think of that scene with Steve where she told him she wanted a divorce or <laughs> led him to tell her that that's what <laughs> she was yeah. about to ask him for? I mean, the thing is she's always had been conflicted about Steve as he said he's been fighting for her this whole time it's like she periodically decides he's not good enough for her or she's bored or whatever and this happened several times I mean he cheated on her and they got back together and I don't know I mean like he was saying he's just done fighting for it over and over and over again which I don't blame him wait so, I I was a devotee of the old series and I watched every episode uh, but I can't remember a lot of them anymore. So he cheated on her. What, <laughs> what were her earlier issues with him? In a nutshell. Well, she was a, she was a very, you know, very uh, successful attorney. And he uh, was like, was a bartender, right? He owned a bar. Yeah. And I thought she felt that he was below her. I'm not sure he even owned it, right? Maybe he was simply he owned bartender. Because didn't he buy it with Aiden? Like Aiden helped him. It was something with Aiden. I don't know. Oh, so maybe because yeah, Aiden a had a bar too. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe they're two different bars, but... I don't remember. She... I think he did end up owning a bar, though. But but I think she thought he was below her, even though yeah. he was devoted to her. Yeah. Now, did she marry him because they were pregnant? No, 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 no. I don't... Because remember, they would have the baby go back and forth. There was a scene when he brought the baby back, and he's like, I, I, I don't want to kill the baby. She's like... Yeah, how this works is I try not to kill the baby, and then you try not to kill the baby. Uh, so it was a cute yeah. scene. But, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, no, they were not together, I don't think. And then they ended up getting together. And she's always been the one who had one foot out the door, and he was the one who wanted to be with her. Was that the gist of it? Well, I think it's one of those interesting things where you have one person who's super successful and educated in a certain way. Mm -hmm. And they're seeing, if, I guess for her, I guess she felt she was dating down, you wow. know, because look who, well, look who uh, Charlotte marries that wealthy attorney and, you know, yeah. Carrie ends up with big, you know, yeah. but. Um, she married a kind hearted, devoted guy. Okay, well, let's jump right in. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that priceless? There's many yes. different kinds of wealth, right? I mean, wealth can be. How, what, how much money you make, but wealth could, I mean, there's no price to put on someone's love and devotion. Is there, Michael? No, and I think that someone's um, monetary worth has very, very little to do with what kind of spouse they can be. So That's I'm not right. going to say that, you know, if you have less money or a better spouse, certainly not necessarily, but certainly having more money doesn't make you a better spouse. I mean, money is extremely helpful in our world, that's true, but having more of it doesn't make you, I think, a better catch, except in terms of you have more money. So she was not dating down someone who well, was big hearted and loving. Well, I think it's interesting because in society, you know, it's no big deal for men who make a lot of money and are very successful to date a woman who is not and will basically be devoted to the guy. But right. like that's <laughs> that's how things have been since the 50s, you know, if not before, since the, you know, for hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. But yeah. to have it where the woman is more successful and accomplished and makes more money and she's with a man who's devoted to her, like, uh, that's wonderful. But it's not something that society really is like, oh, that's so sweet. It's more like 
could you do better? You know, it's, it's, it's unfortunate that maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like society doesn't really encourage that as much as it should. You know, why I think you're right. Could be the one who's successful making them making more money. Why not? Yes. Well, there's this these old stereotypes like a man's supposed to take care of the woman, right? And um, I mean, these stereotypes have multiple layers, but we're often still somewhat imprisoned by them. Right, but isn't it like if you have if you're a woman who can take care of themselves financially, isn't it incredibly helpful to have a man who can take care of you emotionally and be there for you? Isn't that like, that's what you want, right? So why isn't well, that valued? I think it should be valued that people are there to support each other emotionally. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that go both ways. True. Of, of course, People should butt out of each other's business and stop dictating what other people should do. And it would be good if all of us strove, strived to, sure. which is the word. <laughs> so did, did Miranda just get bored? Because she, they were together for like, for a while. Brady's what, 17 or whatever. So they've been together. Yeah. And so maybe, maybe that wasn't it. She just got bored of him. Well, um, yeah. I'm sorry, my mind is still turning about the other issues. So can we finish okay. that up for a second? Then we'll come on to her, sure, yeah, back yeah, to her yeah. boredom. Sure. Listeners, I hope you're not bored with us. This is a very <laughs> juicy topic. We'll say lots of interesting things. Um, but I think it's it's important. I don't think these roles, like one does one person, one does the other. Or if you make more money, the other person should take care of you emotionally. I still think if you make more money, you're there to be an emotional support to your partner and they to you, Right. Yeah. Yes, people should both be contributing in different ways, but I don't think that there is a, a one-to-one trade-off. This is so interesting. Like, if somebody makes more money and the other person is underemployed, let's say, should they stay home and, and do more of the cleaning? Some people protest at that. Other people say, yeah, of course, you have more time. Balance it out. I don't think it has to be an obligation to, to fit these roles or it has to be a one-to-one -one thing. But maybe we're going on a tangent here. What do you think? I think it begs, I think that might be the root of why she's bored with Steve though, because she gets attracted to Che, who mm -hmm. is successful and out there and has a completely different personality than Steve. You know, mm -hmm. she, she she's on stage and she has a following and she's exciting. And mm -hmm. um, I should say they, because I think they go by they. So, so Miranda gets attracted to someone who is kind of the polar opposite to Steve in terms of personality and achievement. And maybe that's why she was so attracted to Jay, because it was so different than her life with Steve, which is sitting home, eating ice cream, watching TV all the time. Yes. However, um, Miranda, I don't know if Chase the poor opposite of Steve. I see what, I see what you mean, but here's what I think. Miranda does not make much of an effort to be interesting herself uh, or, or generate her own excitement in her life. Right, so she sees, meets Che, who's so exciting to her, like she'll give Miranda some energy and Steve's not doing that. But my main gripe with Miranda is it's up to her to generate some energy and excitement in her relationship. Yes, it's also up to Steve, but it's, it has to be collaborative. And of course, Che is going to be more exciting than the person that Miranda has been married to for 18 years or with for 20 years or 23 years. And Miranda Wolf um, that's just the way things work. It, yeah, she was trying to shake it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. She was trying to shake it up, but I don't, I don't know. I mean, so maybe you think that because she had quit her job, she was going back to school to be more of a community oriented attorney. Maybe she was looking at all aspects of her life and was seeing what she wasn't satisfied with. And all of a sudden she wasn't satisfied with sweet Steve who loved her unconditionally. Yes, but that is, that's part of life. So here is, uh, I'll speak directly to all of our listeners. Uh, after a while, the person that you're with for many years is going to be less exciting 
than some hot stranger whom you meet, AKA in this case, Che. Uh, and, but guess what you are to them also? That's life, right? It's not new, it's not exciting anymore. You know them well, you're used to them. And that's just the way it is. And I don't think, I wanna make the point, there's nothing wrong with that. That's part of life. That's one phase of love is that excitement at the beginning. You cannot expect that's going to last and last and last, but it will be replaced to some extent, a large extent, I hope, by the warmth, familiarity. I know these don't sound exciting. They're not exciting, but they are wonderful, right? You can hope that there'll be some excitement and fun and, and great energy for sure. And you should put energy into that because you don't want to be bored. Uh, part of that excitement, I think, and good energy can come from the fact that we change over time, right? And um, I'm pausing because it's such an interesting Aaron trying to collect my thoughts. We change over time. And we often um, may be uncomfortable bringing those aspects of ourselves into a relationship. And then we keep our keep parts of ourselves hidden away from our significant others, then they wind up not knowing us very well. And things can get dull because we're fearful maybe that if we let them uh, in on how we are changing or things we're thinking, they may not like the newer version of us. But that's life. There's no guarantees. And that's part of what can make a relationship interesting and even exciting at times over time. But Miranda short-circuited that whole thing, right? She just says, I'm done with this. It's too dull for me. I want more without thinking how she can play a part in creating that with Steve and discuss it with him and see if she can work on it with him together to create that. I think, I think the show went out of their way to pretty much always make Steve out to be this like blue collar dude. Now he's like losing his hearing in his fifties, which is a little ridiculous. Um, I'm not ridiculous. I mean, it happens, but you know, to that degree, She's he acts totally, like he's in his 80s. He does. He does. And the guy's just like, what the heck? And she has no patience for it at all. Like, yeah, <laughs> she has no patience for it. I mean, it's really bad how she treats him. I mean, for the love of God, mm -hmm. it's not like he, I mean, it, there, there are a lot of things that can happen as you get older that are way more debilitating. I mean, I'm just saying like, it's not, not I don't know. They make him seem out to be this total dullard and, you know, but I don't know. I mean, I think they, they put him in this category of someone who's like a level, sweet, loving guy, but not a lot going on. Well, really. but how much has Miranda expressed her side of things, Tim? Not at all, right? Maybe <laughs> here I'm going to go out on a limb and say, we don't know much about Steve's, what's going on with him. I mean, except that he says he's really devoted to her and he'll never take his wedding ring off. Yeah, he's a yeah. very kind hearted guy. But maybe he's afraid to bring up his own boredom, although that theory is not really true because he says he's very happy with what he has, yeah. come to think of it. But they could talk about this together before her saying, I'm, I'm done with this. I know I keep making that point because it's the most important point I can make. If you're not happy in your marriage, you should talk about it with your partner and figure out if there's some things that you can do and both of you can do to make things better. Now, if she wants more excitement in her life, I know, first of all, she's not a real person. And I also know that what happened on the show happened. But still, this is for the purpose of our listeners to think about their own lives, right? And even us to think about our own lives, our well, own lives. Is it possible that you come to the point where one person really kind of does want to keep growing and changing and moving and then the person is just not, they're just satisfied? Like, what if Steve was like fine with everything? And here she is inspired by politics and world events and she she's changing her career she's going back to school she has all these mm -hmm. new friends she's doing all this charity work like it can happen that one person is just kind of like you know kind of satisfied with things as the status quo and the other person isn't yes and then there are a couple of outcomes okay first of all talk more about it than one five minute segment of initiating something in your kitchen I'm not talking about Carrie's kitchen here, right? I'm talking about Miranda and Steve's kitchen, okay? Talk yeah. about it. Think about it together, okay? Yeah. 
as far as let's say Steve goes, if you want to keep thing, you're happy with the status quo and your partner wants more, that doesn't mean certainly that the marriage has to blow apart. You may decide that you're willing to stretch anyway, right? And go with them to some degree on their journey, even if your preference would be to happily stay home and keep things exactly the same, because that's what marriages call on us to do is figure out how to collaborate with someone who's always different from us and is going to keep changing in different ways, just as we do. We have to figure out how do we stay with that person, a lifelong partnership, if that's what we want to do. So that, that never happens, right? So that would be one outcome, right? Steve could decide, yeah, okay, she wants to shake things up. I'll work on, I'll do my part to shake things up. Or it's also true that you might actually wind up finding a way to be content with someone. And can, I don't use the word content in a negative way. Content is, is great, I think. Content with someone who is not everything you want them to be. Guess what? That's life, right? All right, Steve is not the vibrant, exciting partner that she thinks all these other people might be. Of course, that's her fantasy, right? But she, may just, she could decide that she's willing to, again, I don't mean that pejoratively, willing to live with him as he is, because there are a lot of other things she really likes about him. Again, that's how a long-term marriage works. We accept things that we're not crazy about. Uh, we ask our partners for things that are important to us. We may get those things some of the time, I hope, but definitely not all of the time. And that, that we have to figure out how to live with or not. No marriage is not going to work like that. In other words, every marriage will work like that or blow apart. If you think that your partner is always going to be who you want them to be, then you're not going to stay married if you can't accept that that's not the case. What do you think of what I'm saying? No, I, I can I hear you saying. I, I kind of feel like she had made her decision a long time ago that she was out the door. She had it, I think, years ago. And just when she met Shay, she... She then kind of had these feelings awakened within her that were sitting dormant. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess, I mean, do you feel like people make bargains when they get married and they're, they're kind of, it's generally the person's really not enough to keep them for the long haul? That maybe it's not enough to really, I don't know. I love your question. I'm smiling because <laughs> your question is so great. First of all, with, let me backtrack. With regard to her having decided a long time ago, yes, I think that she was lazy. Okay? Yes, lazy. I see your expression, Lisa Klein. She did not put in the work to figure this stuff out, right? She just thinks he's not good enough. He should be what I want him to be, or I'm out of here. I suspect she never was that crazy about him. And she's always been sort of um, thinking he's not worthy of her. And never that's my, that's my thought because they kept I mean it's it's it, you know it, it took a long time like for her to really accept his love for her and you know let it in and be okay with it but if they so Brady's what 17 18 so they've been married I mean they've been together for a long time at this point mm -hmm. or for people just grow apart I mean is it possible that at their course they're just different people and, and you know it's run its course can a relationship just run its course Yes, absolutely. It can. That's true. You may decide you don't want to be with someone. All because you've been married to them for a long time doesn't mean you have to keep being married to them. You don't have to do anything. So I'm not saying people have to do this, but it may be worth thinking about uh, what can I do here to have a better marriage? What can I do to be someone worth being married to? Right? Does Miranda yeah. ever ask that herself that question? I don't know. Uh, it doesn't seem like it to me actually, I'll go out on a limb and say that. She just looks at how defective uh, or not enough Steve is for her. As far as your question about bargaining or making a deal with yourself to accept that your partner is, how did you put it? Well, I mean, I feel like in relationships, sometimes you're like, well, this person's like 80% of what I want. Or so. I mean, it's enough to be with them for a mm -hmm. while, but it may not be enough to be with them for you know, they say what, like every seven years, you kind of reevaluate the deal. So it's like a seven year cycle. So mm. it, it may be okay for, you know, seven years or 14 years, but up on 20, it's like, eh, you know, I don't know if I want to do this another round. 
You both so, might change in different ways that you could decide yeah. at any time that you're no longer a good fit. Yes, that's true. But marriage gives us, or a long-term relationship gives us this interesting challenge to see if we can figure out how to uh, live with someone who's different from what we might like or the person who we originally met. That's inevitable because people, all of us change over time. Here's so, a question. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Do you feel, so like people are meant to, feel like people are meant to be married for the rest of, like, is that, or is it individual based on the person? I think it can work a lot of the time. Um, if you are willing to not just roll with it, but um, work on yourself as you, and the, que the work is always to figure out how do I find a way to be with someone who's different from me? Not only want a marriage on my terms. If you let yourself do this, Lisa, marriage becomes very interesting over the long term, rather than just saying, I can't believe him or her. I'm, I'm fed up. You know, this isn't what I want. This isn't what I deserve. This isn't what I need. There's a, there's a fair amount, some amount of entitlement in thinking that you should have a partner who's everything you want to be. What about you thinking about what you have to offer them? I'm not saying that marriage should be, you each try to be everything the other person wants you to be. I'm not saying that at all. I think it's a good idea to be open to the other person's requests um, but you may not always, you may sometimes have good reason not to meet those requests. And then on the other side, you've got to accept that or not. But if you want to be married, you have to accept that. But that's, that's a wonderful thing, I think, because it teaches us resilience. It teaches us um, to figure, it helps us figure out what's really important to us, right? What we can and can't live without. So there's amazing things uh, for personal growth if you, in, in working on yourself in a marriage in the way I'm describing. That was a long sentence. Did you follow it? I think it sounds wonderful. And it's funny how we don't really get that much modeling for that. This is a, this is going to sound odd, but um, when I saw Beyonce, <laughs> mm -hmm. Beyonce and Jay-Z on the On the Run tour, I don't know if you know not much about their relationship, but I'm pretty sure I think he cheated on her at this whole thing with the Yellow Album and this whole thing. And going to that concert, and seeing her power, I mean, seeing Beyonce in concert is an incredible experience, but because of her raw power, and, and mm -hmm. I mean that in a very positive way, and then with Jay-Z, and so they've been through couples counseling, the way they were both on stage in their own right as artists, and then the way that they come together and work on their marriage together, even though they've had issues in the marriage, they chose mm -hmm. to work through it, I think is something that is not modeled enough in media in terms yeah. of whether it's on tv movies whatever you don't see that um you know people i don't know if it's because people like drama they want to see people in these hellacious divorces they want to see war of the roses they want to see you know they don't want to see people putting in the work to stay together because maybe right. it's more to see that but, yeah. but what you just said i think i think in society we have a lot of modeling of instant gratification. You know, if the person isn't doing what you want, then ditch them, especially now we mm -hmm. have apps, we have, you know, we can just find somebody else. So there's there's not a lot of emphasis or focus on really relationship building. And I think it's very detrimental to society, honestly. Yes, the I think your society. points are brilliant about the apps and people are replaceable and instant yeah. gratification. And the self-centeredness that I should be able to get everything I want. I know I sound like a judgmental person, but it's true. Well, even look at Miranda. So she doesn't tell Shay. Shay assumes she's in an open marriage. Mm -hmm. Miranda's like, oh, no, like I'm cheating on my husband with you. And Shay's just like, I'm not a homewrecker, you know, which I thought was really solid. That was a great conversation. Shay goes off to Ohio or Buffalo where she went. And Amanda, Amanda, Miranda has a conversation that day mm -hmm. and then goes to Buffalo that night, like, like that, like, oh, yeah. I handled my marriage problem. You know, honey, you're, you're breaking up a relationship of 20 years. You think it's done in one night. You have a child. You, yeah. you honestly think it was like, she's like, handle that. 
you know, she goes right off. And it was shocking in the level of delusion in terms of the repercussions of what she did. Yeah. Yeah, she's all caught up in this fantasy, I think. Yeah. I can just leave it, I'm done, and go on to the new person. And yes, right. I think Che has a lot of integrity in that scene. Now, look at it there. She, what I mean by integrity is she has, knows what, how she wants to behave in this world. And she may want to be with Miranda, but not at that cost. Bay. She goes by Bay. Oh, I'm sorry. Bay. Yes. Bay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, which, yeah, I thought it was fantastic. I thought that was a really, really good um, conversation mm -hmm. that took place there. But, you know, getting back into the apps and everything, people now, we have the opposite of how it was, you know, 100 years ago, where you had the people you met. You know, you didn't have access to anybody. You had the people in your community. You had your relatives. You had your people mm -hmm. around you. That was your world. Yeah. Now we have anybody on the phone. You could be connecting with anybody, anywhere, anyhow. And I think it's diluted the, the reality of how relationships are actually really important and how you connect with people is important, you know? And it's kind of gone out the window, you know, just basic human connectedness is being watered down yeah. into like ghosting and this and you know west elm caleb and all this kind of crazy stuff where people can go around do you hear that thing um it's the name for, of somebody who like catfishes people on on tinder or whatever it is like and it's it's this i don't know if that's his actual tiktok it was about tiktoks about a guy who was catfishing women in i think it was in new york it's like oh i'm a designer at west elm and then he like love bombs you and then he leaves you know, you wow. have all of this crazy stuff going on where because of the apps, because of the technology, it's people are doing these insane things. And, yeah. and I don't know, I, it's also, it's really, I think, watering down, you know, true connectedness. And just speaking to, you know, then some randos with Che and they're at like lunch at that diner. And these people are coming up to Che, these people who really appreciate what they're doing, which is great. And they're like, oh, you slept with my friend. Oh, you slept with my friend. Mm -hmm. It's just like, Wait, what? You know, and it's like, I was just, I mean, fine. But at the same time, it's like, what the hell? Here's Miranda leaving her marriage yeah, for this relationship. And then hearing about all the other people that Shay is sleeping with. Mm -hmm. Well, Miranda, I don't know. <clears throat> it's, it's, inter it's an interesting time. <laughs> um, I, used, I used to hear when we were little that people leaving the Soviet Union, when there was a Soviet Union, would freak out when they came to our supermarkets and saw all the choice and uh, yeah it's a little bit like that right like with so much choice you can go crazy and never settle on anything i'm talking about being able to find anyone in the app now and, and um we may decide you don't want to settle on anything and i know people who you know they start these long distance relationships with someone on the other side of the world who may not even actually exist because they don't have to, I don't, because there could be 5,000 reasons, but one of them is they don't have to deal with the reality of living with someone, settling down and dealing with the fact that they're not a fantasy. But then what do you wind up with? Yeah. Somebody who's yeah. not really even real, like West End Elm, West Elm. Yeah. West Elm. Bob. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's kind of like it was different, you know, years ago when you were stuck in your house on the prairie with one dude in a family, you weren't going anywhere, you know, so mm -hmm. either you made it work or you, you know, fell off a building. So, you know, it's, I think it's kind of we're in a situation now where we don't have to, we don't have to settle, which is good. But at the same time, I think then people are maybe not putting in the work in to get to deeper levels of relationship that they could be doing. Well, but I think we do have to sell. I may have misunderstood the context you're saying that. And to some degree, there are more choices. That's true. Of course. It's not like, so either, or it's either you're on the prairie and choose one person. I know you weren't saying it was either, or you're consumed by 5 million choices on an eight dozen apps. Um, but we still have to, if we want to be in a, in a significant relationship, we do have to uh, make a choice and settle, settle for some things that we might not like, unless we want to keep pursuing 
uh, the next thing that looks like it might be everything we want. And then we'll wait till we're disappointed, which is inevitable and leave again and look for the next thing. And that, that could be your life. That's but again, I think- It leads to depth of relationship. Like, I don't, I don't think we're seeing a lot of modeling. I'm not, I'm not saying that pop culture is supposed to model, but you know, it's not the best <laughs> they do. So um, that's why I was so taken by the Beyonce Jay-Z modeling. It was like, mm -hmm. okay, they did the work. They stuck it out. Pink and her husband, same thing. Like they had crisis after crisis, they stuck it out, they did the work, they stayed together. Yeah. And there yeah. are those cases where you hear like Kristen Bell and Dex. So um, you hear about mm -hmm. these couples that make the commitment and they yeah. work it out and they stay together, but it takes, again, work on both parties. Yeah, So for sure. Yeah. I mean, I guess I got the impression from Steve that they made it seem like he's just totally good with sitting on the couch, not having sex, eating some ice cream, you know, it's totally good with that. You know, so they hadn't had sex in years. Yeah. It was sex in the city, you know, so. Mm -hmm. Do you think it was because they were letting Brody have, uh, Brady have sex in the house with his girlfriend that then Miranda started thinking that there's something wrong with my sex life? Um, I hadn't thought of that. <laughs> I don't know. She seemed mainly, they seemed to, she seemed appalled by it. No. Are you letting your kid have sex in the house, in the apartment? It's not even a house. On the First other side of your wall? Wasn't there a scene where they were hearing? Yes. Yeah. Ew. Why? Boundaries, please. Uh, and then it, it, then it basically, maybe she's like, huh, there's something wrong in my marriage. I'm not having sex. Maybe, or maybe she just, you know, she was, it was clear she was unhappy in some scenes where they were putting the chia seeds on the ice cream and everything. Um, she just seemed kind of bored. And I guess running into Che ignited something in her. But, um, but I still contend that she uh, could have, I won't say should have, but could have addressed this if she was interested in seeing if her marriage could work. She could have addressed this with Steve in a thoughtful way. Yes, he could also have addressed it with her, right? But she's the one who's unhappy and decided to leave. Right. Uh, I certainly think that it's, um, it's if you want your marriage to work, it requires more than a five-minute intervention and then calling it quits. If we were going to titrate this down to a, to a theme, a bottom line, is that, would that be your bottom line for this conversation? Um, well, there's Here's a summary. I'd say Sometimes my bottom summary. line is, um, we don't get everything we want in a long-term relationship. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's, and navigating, negotiating or navigating all of the, um, issues of what's important, what's less important, what's a bottom line. How do you deal with someone who's changing over time as well, and how do you deal with your changing at the same time is very interesting work, which can make a marriage fascinating to be in. That's my bottom line. What do you think? I think that sounds good. Thank you, Michael. Yeah. <laughs> Another fun oh, conversation. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was great. Okay, it was wonderful to talk with you. Thank you for having me back. Likewise, always a pleasure.